Hello everybody. This video goes as a tribute to motherhood. We have all been breastfed and I had been thinking of talking something about women's health. And the first thing I start with is breast, especially in relation to lactation. The breast is made of the mammary gland, which produces the milk and the fat. And the composition of the fat varies tremendously. In some breasts it could be just 10%, whereas in others it might be 50% or more. There are a lot of factors which govern the breast fat and one of which is the total body fat that the woman has. The mammary glands are arranged in lobes. I have just tried to give a pictorial representation and it is suspended in between fat. There are 10 to 20 such lobes and in between you have fat. The firmness to the glands generally comes from the mammary glands and these mammary glands during pregnancy become bigger, become uh, ready for producing milk under the influence of hormones. So a woman is generally prepared to breastfeed and the size of the breasts have no correlation to their ability to feed. If you look at the external part of the breast, we divide it into two sections, the central nipple protruding part, which as I said has multiple openings, not one, to let the milk out, and the hyperpigmented area around the nipple, which is known as the aerola. The major problem which happens in lactation is infection of the breast which is as much as 3% of all lactating women, which is a huge number. It's like 1.5% of the whole population. And that is why I thought, is there something we can tell you to decrease the incidence of this infection? And it happens because of a blob in the ducts, which is carrying milk. And we know the breasts are full of milk in the lactation period, postpartum period, so they are anyway very congested and any block in these ducts predisposes to infections. What causes the block in the pores? We know certain reasons. One is congestion. The breast should be looked for any signs of congestion. It could be just milk. And women who are not able to feed the child because of whatever reasons should ensure that they take the milk out of the breast either by squeezing or by the use of suction pumps because if the milk remains in the breast engorged it is going to lead to infection and the other reason is this being from the injury to the around the nipple and to the ducts and this is sometimes seen as cracks and fissures on the nipples, so it's a skin, it can become dry, cracked, and every time it goes into the mouth of your child when you are lactating, it is very likely that he is transferred his bacteria from his mouth through these cracks and fissures to your breast causing an infection. And faulty techniques of feeding is one common reason why there could be skin trauma. The other could be obviously uh, not great handling of the skin by a lactating mother. The major symptom which an infection causes is pain. So although the breasts feel a little heavy but they never pain. If there is any pain in the breast it should be reported to the doctor because this is a sign of infection. Otherwise, you can also have enlargement and redness. You've got to take immediate help because if you cross 48 hours with that pain, there is a chance there could be formation of pus inside the breast. Within this 48 hours, if we start an antibiotic, maybe you can get treated with just an antibiotic. But if there is a delay, the development of abscess requires surgical procedure. So, Taking steps at time is very, very important. What is so much about technique of breastfeeding? Well, I had to read about it myself before talking it to you. And a common word which is attached to it is latch. And that tells you how your child holds on to your breasts. How 
to start with, the first thing is you should know when your child is hungry or is looking for feeds, and that is probably when he's still playful and making some smacking noises and pulling around his lips somewhere. Well, mothers know it all, I know. Don't let them cry for their feed because crying impairs how they can suck the milk out. We will talk about it. So you have identified that your child is requiring a feed. The first thing you do is hold the child obviously and hold your breast either like a U or as a C with your fingers around the areola. When you put your child's mouth inside, just tickle his lips a little bit so that he opens his mouth. His mouth should be wide open when he is trying to take milk from you. It should not be like a fist mouth where he is using a nipple like a straw. That is not the way how you feed. Their mouth should be wide open, open as if they are eating a ripe juicy mango. And you got to look at the position of the upper lip. So the upper lip should stay just above the nipple, somewhere here, just here. Then the tongue should be below the nipple and the lower lip should be pointing outwards. So if you look at your breast when you are feeding your child, the upper part of areola is visible. Whereas we expect almost the entire lower areola will be involved in the mouth of the child, it will not be visible. And it almost makes a firm seal against your skin. And when the child makes an effort, we have the release of the hormone oxytocin. And it is believed that it almost causes a letdown of the milk from the mammary glands. So these pores which are there are guarded by valves, but as soon as the child sucks the valves open, the mammary glands almost throw the milk in the ducts and it pours out through them. So it is important that he starts well so that the mechanism gets started. Then the breastfeeding is fairly easy. If he just sucks on the nipple, he may not be able to draw much milk and he will become tired out. So he may refuse feeds, he may become irritable and that is only because you did not know the right technique. We said the position of the child should be almost like a sniffing one, so slightly the neck is bent back. Obviously you have to hold their head because head holding starts only after three months. The cheek of the child should be in contact with the breast and as I said you, the lips, the tongues and the upper lip should be in the right position. They will be able to do it very, very effortlessly and you might almost hear a gurgling sound because a lot of milk gets transferred when he is doing it the right way. If your child is satisfied, you can get over with feeding from one side, you can feed from the other breast the next time. But if he needs more, you can always feed him from the other breast at the same time. As I told you, when he is drawing the milk, he makes a very good seal against the skin. So when you have to disengage, do not just take your child's head off because that's traumatic. That can lead to injuries on your skin. So we say when we disengage, do it gently. Just put your fingers around the child's mouth. Just open the vacuum, which slightly must be created and then disengage the child. On the milking, Everything happens under the influence of two hormones, prolactin and oxytocin. Prolactin is what prepares the mammary glands for producing milk. And it somehow happens that it does it only during pregnancy. If you milk outside the lactational period, general lactational period may be even one to two years after you have given childbirth, then you should consider you having abnormalities of the prolactin hormone. So that is the only other area where milking from the breast is a signal of danger. You need to consult your doctor. I have put 
this into my YouTube link and I have shared a video which is around 3 minutes which has some pictorial diagrams and an excellent oration by a lady on how to breastfeed your child. I would like all of you to visit for those who have interest in the lactational part of breast. And for all the mothers who are on my page, I invite them for comment. I would like to hear their experiences and I would like them to show, show some insights into how they handled their lactational period.